is up YouTube? It's your girl Rochelle and I'm back with another video. Welcome to my Goodbye July series where I will be dropping a video every day for the rest of July 2020, 21. 2021. <laughs> Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. I am very excited about today's video. You know if you see in my face, you know it must be something juicy, something good. Today's video, it's time for a mortgage payoff update. We're talking mid-year progress. We're talking about how things are going, paying down our mortgage in 2021 with the goal of being mortgage-free by 2021. If that's something you wanna see, then stick around. Okay, first up, let me just make my plan, lay it all out for you guys and share with you what we will be talking about in today's video in case there's only certain parts you want to get to. If you are new to the whole home buying experience, you are saving to buy your first home, you are thinking about pulling the trigger, this is the video for you. If you are someone who is new to home ownership and you just bought your first home or your second home and you want to know how can I become mortgage free as quickly as possible, this is the video for you. I am, think of me as your future self coming to you, spitting all the game, giving you all the tips and tricks to be successful in paying down your mortgage. And maybe you're someone who's mortgage free already and you just like to stay inspired by watching content like this. If that's you, shout out to you, okay? Because I can't wait to be where you are. I plan to pay our mortgage off by December 2021. Of, that's this year. We have about five months. Okay. But here's what we're going to talk about today. The first thing I'm going to do is share with you guys our purchase history, like the climate surrounding what made us purchase a house, the numbers, what we signed up for, all that good stuff. And I hope to share this information with you so you can decide, hey, is it, does it make sense for you to buy or rent? right now in your life. You gotta find your why, people, find your why. Next up, we're gonna talk about our payment history over time. We were poor managers of our money. Um, we were paying like the bare minimum, you know, you know. But now we are making double mortgage payments every month religiously. It's not a game. Like even if it's a magic month like it is right now in the month of July, <laughs> check out my video if you wanna see how we're spending all that extra money, then it doesn't matter. The plan stays the same. We make an extra mortgage payment. Then we're going to talk about our current progress, our new milestone that we've reached um, in paying off our mortgage despite slowing down our snowball. And this is for the people who are feeling kind of burnt out. You know, you get burnt out on this, on this debt-free journey. You get tired, okay? It's summer. Outside is opening back up. The weather is beautiful. You want to spend some of that money on a vacation maybe, okay? All right, sorry, just to interject real quick. I'm rocking my shirt from Budget and D. Um, her, her and her homegirl do a t-shirt company called Fre French Pressed, French Pressed. And the energy from the shirt, <laughs> I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. I gotta share with you, okay? Erica, Jill, India, and Corinne. Come on, if you know, you know. And you might be looking at my, my, my her, my her here, and my best Kelly Stamps voice, my her. I pulled the trigger and your girl is locked. I, I, there are no words yet. There are no words. So I have a fresh sister lock install going on for you today. And um, if you want to know the deets on that, let me know in the comments, hashtag sister locks, so that I can know if you want me to drop a video about how that whole process went. And I hope that I get, actually low-key hope that people want to hear more about the sister locks journey because I'm a little, I'm a little pressed. I'm a little pressed. Okay, I got my hair up in a bun now. Excuse the dandruff. We did go to the beach yesterday. But anyway, okay, back to the program. Oh, one more thing. My earrings. My homegirl Tracy has her own business. I just keep finding all these wonderful black owned businesses and I'm just like, oh, beating it up. And she moved here for the, for the year because that was what she felt like doing. And she brought a whole bunch of hoops. She knows that I love hoops and she's just a beautiful spirit. I will have her info below if you want to partake in her goodness on her website. Okay, 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 okay. I promise we're back to the house now. Then we're gonna talk about the amortization schedule. Um, because I feel like that is crucial if you are trying to be mortgage-free 
and pay up pay down your mortgage quickly you need to know what your numbers are so you can stay motivated it's more than just seeing the number go down it's seeing how quickly you pay off your mortgage because you are avoiding interest my good people okay all right then I'm going to share the plan the plan to be mortgage free by December 2021 Okay, I'm going to share exactly how we're going to make this happen. I ran the numbers this morning and I just had to text Micah and my financial advisor, aka friend, aka sister. And I was just, it was just a beautiful thing to see the end result. So many times I have been here messing around with the numbers, trying to make it happen. And it's like, okay, in six years, it's going to happen. In five years, y'all, this year, it's really going to happen if everything continues as it is. Then the final thing we're going to talk about, I'm going to share, like I said, some tips and tricks sprinkled in to help you decide whether you should pay off your mortgage or invest. Okay? Because, you know, this is a, a crazy wild time to be living right now. Everybody is starting to invest. Some people have been been and time is money. So should you be paying off your mortgage or should you be investing? Let me know in the comments below. Are you team mortgage or are you team invest? I am not going to lie. I, I'm team invest. I am. But that's only because we are at the journey that, you know, at the point in the journey where we are right now. So anyway, this, let's just dive right into it. I have so much to share with you. Oh. Now I have to start off with my disclaimer first. I am not team mortgage. I am not hashtag team mortgage. Why Rochelle, why, why, why? Because we are in 2021. And after being a homeowner for so long, slash having to have tenants occupy that space, slash having to pay for repairs and upgrades and renovations, and just the whole responsibility thing, I am not feeling it. Like, if people are like, oh, I know when you guys become mortgage free, you guys are gonna buy your next. No, we're not. Nah, probably not. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I have other goals, not a house. That's just me personally. So, if you are renting right now, I hope to share the full story so that you guys can decide hey, should I stay renting? Should I renew that lease? Or should I get inside of a house? Especially with the prices of homes right now. Y'all, don't get, don't, don't, don't do it. Okay? You might just need to sit still for a while. I don't know. Let me not be in your business. Let me just dive into what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so first let's talk about the history, right? Let's talk about the numbers. So, my husband and I purchased our first home from his parents. This is his childhood home. We purchased it from them for $50,000. And you could basically say that was a gift because yeah, <laughs> who buys homes for $50,000? Even back in the day, this was in the year 2007. We were 25 and 23 years old respectively. We were a dual income, no kid household at the time. We both worked full time. My husband is is and was an electrician um he's an electrical engineer now but still same pipeline and i was a nurse full-time slash nurse manager of an assisted living so life was crazy um but at the time what made us decide to look into purchasing a home is one day my husband and i we were chilling living our best life enjoying $500, maybe even $400 apartment rent. Get into it. This is to the year 2007, my good people in Baltimore, Maryland. And we got a note on the door that rent was going up. Not only was rent going up, it was going from three digit rent to four digit rent. So you could say those years between 2005 to, th to 2007 is when the cost of living, I just noticed it took a huge jump. I don't know what happened back then. I was young. I wasn't really in tune to what was going on in the world, especially finance wise. So something happened where all of a sudden people were like, no, we need to charge more. We need to charge more. And so we instantly were like, if we're gonna pay four digit rent, maybe we need to see what we can get for a home. You know, if we're gonna pay this type of rent now, we need to make it worth our while. And I think the fact that we were so young, cause at this point in time, my husband and I have been married for two and a half years. Um, it really helped. So if you are a person who is still in their early twenties, you really wanna be thinking about the home buying process right now. As it pertains to 
if you this is, I'm only talking to the people who are younger who have goals of being mortgage free but you know at a very young age like my husband and I have a goal to be mortgage free by that time we're 40 years old so if you can pull this off it's actually a life hack going into your you know older years and not having to worry about a mortgage there's not enough conversation about that um, so and I'm speaking from experience here and I'm speaking from you know dealing with things that are going on with in my personal life with my grandmother my parents my husband's parents I can see the difference um, between those who don't have a mortgage and those who do so anyway that's that's pretty much um, how it started and if you are looking at buying a home for your first time consider looking for a home buyer first time home buyer program where you would take some courses you know get in on some notes and pass it and um, they will actually help with closing costs they will help with you know um, settling on your first mortgage all that good stuff but the first thing you got to do is the research you got to put in a little bit of grunt work a little bit of Google action and see what works for your zip code in your state okay 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 my second tip is to try to work directly with a bank or a credit union preferably preferably a credit union try to avoid this new middleman thing that's going on where I'm seeing these mortgage lenders that aren't really banks case in point I have a family member and they got inside of a mortgage with one of these shady sketchy things I never knew existed and um, the house was he passed and the house was later given to my grandma and my grandma passed my uncle is like okay let me call these companies and let them know listen I need some time I got to look into the paperwork because my grandmother was still paying her own bills okay she was 90 years young okay she was still doing it, everything for herself highly independent still had her mind and he called the company and they were like oh we're not a bank we're not allowed to give a grace period or waive late fees this is going to directly hit your credit um, and you are basically on your way to foreclosure just by missing one payment so my takeaway is don't don't go it don't go for these companies Same, you know this applies to other things in life but just do your research be careful my other uncle who you know had the home initially and who got in with this company he probably just didn't know that this company you know would be this way but yeah do your research be careful and choose wisely because this is a company you're gonna have to work with for the next 30 plus years you know depending on if you you know decide to do a 15 year mortgage 30 year here in Hawaii, we live in Hawaii, and these people are signing up for 50-year mortgages sometimes here. I just hate it all. Why do we have to pay so much just to live somewhere? Stay on task. So, anyway, we bought our first home, and our, our average mortgage was $500 per month. And you couldn't tell us nothing, okay? We were like, oh, we got a home. We got a home. We got somewhere that's our own. Put a stamp on it, you know? Um, and just to kind of give you an idea of what $500 a month actually broke down to in terms of mortgage, $200 went to interest off top because, you know, they get their money first. Another $200 went to our escrow, which included our private mortgage insurance, our homeowner's insurance, because they were two separate things for us in our scenario. Um, what else? What else is escrow? Oh, property taxes, stuff like that. And then that little teeny, you know, $100 or less was actually the only amount that went to the principal. So speaking of interest, our interest rate was 7%. And that is really not that great when you compare it to interest rates nowadays for people who had good credit. And so we were able to get inside of a home with poor credit. And the fact that we were still able to work with a credit union and get obtain a mortgage loan with 7% interest, to this day, I'm just grateful because I feel like, I don't know, I don't even, probably we were supposed to be rejected. So you get my drift, you get my drift, 7% interest, we um, definitely appreciate the fact, even to this day, that we do have an escrow account. Um, highly, highly recommend if you are not someone who likes to work directly with companies. What that means is that your credit lender, your mortgage lender, 
um, whether that's a credit union or a bank or whatever, they will be in charge of making sure that all your insurances are paid out, make sure that your, um, what is the thing I keep forgetting, your property taxes are paid, things like that. Ask those questions because you want to know what you're responsible for paying and what the bank is responsible for paying um, because we actually to this day still get a bill in the mail every six months from Baltimore City saying here's your property tax bill it's time to pay it it's two thousand dollars but we know that we don't have to pay it because the bank pays it for us so like I said just make sure that you really understand who is responsible for what another thing to take into account is after a certain amount of time you know once you have paid off a certain portion of your mortgage you no longer are responsible for paying pmi so you want to make sure that falls off in our scenario it has already fallen off because we've been able to pay down our mortgage so quickly this is a 1000 square foot townhome brick townhome modest townhome in baltimore urban baltimore and at the time, like I said, we did have student loan debt. And then once we got married and got into a home, we did acquire um, some consumer debt, which made it very, very hard for us to renovate our home while living in it. And so people are always like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to get a house and I'm going to renovate and I'm going to take out a second loan and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Be careful um, with taking on second mortgages. We took on a home equity loan because we needed to do some repairs on the home. It was for $10,000. But because we weren't good with money as far as paying it back, it took us almost 10 years to pay back $10,000. So imagine how much money in interest we paid to the credit union. And so life lessons that I've learned, I could have just saved up $10,000 over a few years and then got those repairs done. Those repairs weren't urgent. They just needed to happen in the next couple of years. So do what works for you. Okay. All right. How are we doing so far? How are we feeling about this so far? Yeah. All right. All right. Now, the one thing my husband and I have always been on the same page about is is living life in the present. So one thing that we always did what we had to do and sacrificed for was travel. We did budget travel. So sometimes it was Ocean City. Sometimes it was Rehoboth Beach. So every once in a while it was a cruise. But we tried to always do something for ourselves and I think that that also is something you have to respect when you're on the debt-free journey make sure that you are still doing something fun because you will get burnt out and you will be disgusted with the journey and you might walk away and never come back and we don't want that we want you to stay and we want you to become debt free and we need you to push through so give yourself opportunity to spend money on something else we were just really in a good space we had a really good travel agent who allowed us to make payments on cruises 12 to 18 months in advance and we would make $100 payments, $50 payments, $25 payments. But when, you know, every 18 months or so, we were vacationing in some way. So um, that's one of the reasons I became a travel agent because I just wanted that experience for someone else. I want people to know that you can live life on a budget. You can travel on a budget, okay? So do what works for you. And the one thing that I wasn't really on board with was the waiting until we saved all of our money. I'm switching topics. I'm switching now to renovations and home upgrades. I wanted to attack those things over time. Whereas my husband, he had this big vision. See, I'm not a big dreamer. I'm, I play it safe with everything. This is why you gotta be careful who you connect with. He is so awesome at like being patient and being frugal and being good with money and paying back everything and getting right with where we needed to be because you know, back in 2007, I was ready to knock walls down and do a kitchen and do this and get into more debt. And he was like, no, let's just chill. It's just me and you in this house. The house is functional. It's safe. It's secure. We will one day do the entire house. I promise you. And I was just like, <laughs> but one day that day, that day came, 2019, which was 12 years later, we had saved up enough money to renovate entirely, like completely gut and start from the studs, a new main bathroom. And it wasn't large. It was a very modest bathroom, but it's completely new. And the feeling that comes with having something that's completely new inside of your home that you're almost about to pay off, that feeling is unmatched. There were tears, lots of tears from the Rochelle department. So I highly encourage you to do what you can to save for these expenses that you know are going to happen in life, especially when it comes to your home. 
Um, we also made full renovations of our entire basement level. Our kitchen and dining room is in our basement. It's a 50s style home. Um, and so, I mean, from the back door to the front window in the living laundry room area, we completely had that gutted. And so we spent on average about $35,000 total cash. <sighs> Yeah. And this is the stuff that I am instilling in our daughter. We both are because we know it's possible. You just have to wait for it. You have to be patient. And it might not take you 12 years. It took us 12 years because we had to pay off some other debt first, you know, make some things happen. He had to wait on me to realize and see the vision. Do what you can to just work on paying down that mortgage as quickly as possible. Um, if you are able to make some rent, you know, upgrades yourself, do some DIY projects to hold you over, highly recommend. $100 at Home Depot is not going to break the bank. Um, but it's when we keep going back to Home Depot every weekend for 10 years where we're like, okay, okay, okay. Now, I bring all that to you. Um, let's talk about the current, shall we? Okay, how are we doing with talking about this, the plan and everything? Um, so current progress. Last time we talked, we had gotten the mortgage down to $19,887. We celebrated a new milestone. We are now mortgage teenagers. We hard had it now and stuff. Okay, all right, we only eat candy now. No, I'm just joking. I'm only joking. But since that moment on June the 3rd, 2021, when we got our mortgage down to $19,000, we have been busy making small payments over time. That we made a regular mortgage payment of $596.64. Then we were able to make um, principal payments for the rest of June, $43.36, $640. Um, then we made another regular mortgage payment because we try to stay a month or two ahead of, on our regular payments. Um, so we made another $596.64 payment. Then again, more principal payments, $43.36, $640. And then there's going to be another $640 payment, which hasn't even cleared yet that we are waiting to clear. Once all the dust settles, our new mortgage I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to tell you now. Our new mortgage is now $17,461.77. Woo! Y'all, y'all, we are under $18,000. The goal was to, like, you know, drop it from $19,000 to $18,000 this month. So the fact that we got an extra payment in, it was a magic month. So we had that third extra mortgage payment. It really just pushed the needle. It pushed the needle. So $17,461.77 is what our new mortgage balance is as of today. Now the beautiful part about our mortgage payment and you know the fact that we are almost done with paying this thing off, this thing, this that has just been a cloud over our heads for so long, for almost what 13 years, is that our home has actually gone up in value. When we first bought the home for $50,000, it was worth ninety. dollars um, We had it inspected and appraised um, just because that's something you have to do when you're taking ownership of the home. And we never really looked at it again, really. Well, <laughs> I've been checking it more recently. And it is now worth $150,000. So the fact that, you know, we've been able to make repairs and make upgrades on top of that, I honestly think it could sell for more than $150,000. But the fact that a, a cute little modest, family townhome can go for that like we would be able to you know sell it or rent it out and make that type of profit is just so beautiful to me so as you know we do have some rental income that we have every month right now we only charge what the mortgage is six hundred dollars a month and people might be like whoa wait a minute you don't make a profit off your mortgage the beautiful part is we technically do and i say that in the sense of we had two goals when we wanted to rent our space out we wanted to have a tenant who would not mind having construction living in a full construction zone having people in walking in and out at all hours of the day and night because we wanted someone to keep the space safe we didn't want to have to hand over keys to a whole lot of strangers and so our tenants we've had two sets of tenants while we you know been here in hawaii and both of them have been like no problem I get to have cheap rent. I don't care. 
And they both work a lot. Both tenants, you know, were people who had, you know, long hours at work. So it's not a huge inconvenience. And they got to reap the reward. So the first tenant, you know, he stayed in the space, dealt with, you know, having contractors in and out, but he had a fresh new bathroom. Second tenants, they now had the fresh new bathroom plus the amazing new, it's a man cave from my, from my second tenant, and laundry area, new half bath, and new kitchen slash dining. So they're, they are winning, okay? But, and, you know, they get to benefit from having the new clean space. Um, the second goal we had is that we wanted a tenant, period, because we didn't want to have to pay for utilities. I can't stand that mess. Having to pay utilities on a home that you're not living in, again, I just can't. It's just, we actually, our utilities would almost equal our mortgage when we were living there. So, you know, I'm talking gas and electric, Wi-Fi, um, cable, water bill, any of that stuff, any of that mess. And I'm like, it, it, it just, it ate away at my soul. So the fact that as soon as we moved away, we were able to have a tenant. Now I want to share with you guys the plan. Okay, we're gonna talk about the amortization schedule and the plan. How are you gonna pay off $17,000, Rochelle? How? You told me, you already told me in your video that you dropped yesterday that your income is only $5,000 for the month of August, which is beautiful income. We're going to take it. We're going to take it. Check out the video Eye in the Sky if you want to see how we're going to spend it. Here's the plan. The phase one, I think of it as a stool with three or four legs on it. You have to hit this thing from all sides, okay? I'm spitting free game here on how to knock your mortgage out, okay? If you want to even just start to gain some traction, okay? Maybe you're not pressed about paying it off tomorrow. You want it paid off just sooner than later. Start to do these things and you will see changes. Double mortgage payments. Say your mortgage payment is $1,000 a month. Try to pay two. Try to at least pay half. So $1,500. By making extra mortgage payments, it will eat away at the interest that it plans on charging you and you are knocking out interest that you've already accrued and have to pay back. So it kind of slows that momentum on that interest snowball. See, we talk about debt snowball and making debt snowball payments, but there's not enough conversation about this huge interest snowball that is happening when you take on debt. And so, you know, by doing that alone, we are shaving 880. Okay, where were we? Oof, I got scared. My battery, my camera. Ooh, it was okay. It was just... So, $880.87 is being shaved off of our mortgage every month off of the principal. Okay, that doesn't include the money that we spend on interest and escrow. Um, and so, by doing that, we will shave $4,400 off between the months of August and December of this year. So, $17,000. Calculator. <laughs> it's really not a game. It's this easy. $17,461.77 minus $4,400. That gets us down to $13,061 just like that. The second piece of the stool that we're going to do is we are going to contribute all the money that I save in our nickel challenge. See, this is why people can't tell me nothing about savings challenges. Savings challenges work, honey. So for the savings challenge that I'm doing in particular, I'm saving at least $3,000 by December 2021. So which means I'm putting $500 a month to the side for this challenge. So minus that, minus the $3,000. Just like that, we're at $10,061.77 left to save by December 2021 so we can make this large payoff uh, payment. That's the second stool. The third, I mean, the second leg. The third leg is the monthly savings challenges that I do. So for the month of July, you know I did the Hot Girl Summer Savings Challenge. <laughs> Not just because it's cute and it was made by Wanda Lust and Diva, okay? All right? And I got to have fun with my girl Mel Budgets and Cassie J Budgets. Shout out to her. She should be reaching 1K subscribers today. All right? I'm speaking it into existence. So I saved $300 for that. That's going on the mortgage. Minus that. $9,761.77. Then I'm doing the 26 week challenge. Come through savings challenges. Come on y'all. If you want some savings challenge ideas, I'm your girl. Me. Check out the video, Eye in the Sky. I really am not playing. I'm spitting some free game stuff that I have learned, okay? People put me on to. Minus $1,053 for the 26 week 
savings challenge is down to $8,708.77 just by doing savings challenges and making double payments. If you can knock almost half of your mortgage off just by doing, come on, come on, come on. So now it's my husband and I's job to save $8,708.77 by December 31st, 2021. Sooner if at all possible, because you know how long stuff takes over the holidays. But I know we can do this. I know we can. We're going to do this. In fact, if I'm being honest, I technically have that right now saved. Um, because you know, you've been watching me stash this cash the whole month of July. You see how much money I'm putting to the side. Really, that's money that I'm using because I'm trying to grow our money that we are going to spend and pay bills from out of. So it's our Hawaii sinking fund. But worst case scenario, if I had to touch it and to, they told me I could be mortgage free today, I'd pay it. I'd pay it. So the goal is to keep growing that beast, okay? Just make that snowball payment just larger and larger and larger. So that those are the three ways that I am contributing to my stool. Now I have a bonus stool leg because your girl is not so small. I need all four legs on my stool, okay? And if you're wondering where I'm getting this analogy from, check out Money Explained on Netflix. Let me know in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. Fourth leg. Bonus savings challenges. You might have heard me mention in my last two videos that I am doing the Wednesday weather challenge. I'm bringing it back. I'm blowing the dust off of it. In the month of January, February, and January and February, I hit it hard doing this savings challenge. And I had to pause it because I needed to save a whole lot of money in a short amount of time to make our kitchen payments. That's done now. So we're restarting it. So who knows how much money I'll be able to save from that savings challenge. And then I had the savings challenge that chose me. I didn't choose it. And that's the coin challenge. See, every time I go for walks, I find change. It's crazy how much money is thrown to the ground here on the island of Oahu, Hawaii. And I know mentally what makes sense in my head is what can you really buy here with change? And so I get why people, you know, drop it, putting their dollars in their purses. I do find dollars sometimes, one and five dollar bills, but for the most part, it's change. And I can't stand change. I actually am that person that will go up, get rung up at the counter and be like, what's my balance? Oh, your balance is $43.50. What charity do you have right here that I can donate to so I can round my number to a whole number? It's just the OCD in me. But I have... I said, you know what? I've been given this, this money. I can't choose that it's in coins. Let me take this money. And so imagine how much money I have saved in the first six months. Six months of 2021. Check out my, my savings challenge six month update. Coins. Okay? So that is my fourth bonus leg. That is how I plan to pay off our mortgage by December 2021. And right now, your girl is just excited. I'm excited. Okay? All right, now I want to quickly go over the amortization schedule with you. Right now, right now, go to bankrate.com. Oh, don't. That's the wrong website. Go to www.amortization-calc.com. Amortization-calc.com. Bankrate.com also does have an amortization schedule, but I like this one for on the go because you can do it right on your phone. Type in how much you want to spend on your home, put your property taxes on there, your loan term, your interest rate, your HOA fees, your PMI, your start date, and watch the numbers unfold. Now for us, we don't have HOA fees. That's another life hack. Try and get a home that does not uh, require HOA fees. That's almost impossible living here in Hawaii. I mean, even a place we're about to, we moved to already technically, it has $55 HOA fees every month. And I'm like... <laughs> But, you know, if you have amenities, if you have a pool, if you have, you know, parks for the kids and the doggies, you're going to have to pay for some of that. That money has to come from somewhere. And somehow that it doesn't come from rent. It has to come from an additional fee. You know what it is. It's the world we live in. So anyway, the amortization schedule is going to give you, no, it's going to give you your starting date, your payoff date, everything in between. And three main things, which is your interest, your principal, and your balance. Now understand, if you are someone that has escrow rolled into your mortgage, this is not going to show on here for you, but it will still give you an idea of how long and how quickly you are taken to pay off your mortgage. So for us, August 2007 was our start date, $50,000 was our balance. If we, if we 
scroll down. Let's scroll down to July 2022. No, July 2021. Our mortgage should technically be $38,359, but it ain't. So instead of it being $38,359, it is $17,000, like we said, $17,461.77. So the closest window would be $17,953. And we technically should not have reached this milestone until February 2032. So we are 11 years ahead on paying our mortgage off. Um, and if we are able to pull this off this year, we will have paid off our mortgage in half the time, which is always the goal, okay? So we have essentially made a 30 year, turned a 30 year mortgage into a 15 year mortgage. And understand, I did not speak much about our history, but we used to just pay the bare minimum. That was due $500, $500. I wouldn't even pay $500 in a penny, okay? Imagine if I did. Imagine how that would take off the shave off a couple dollars in a couple months. But now we know. I feel like I've shared everything with you guys, you know. I hope I share some tips and tricks, some things that really make you think, you know. And I think the piece that I want to end with is this. If you are trying to decide should you be investing more or should you be uh, paying off your mortgage quicker, decide on how quickly you want to pay your house off. Is this a forever home? Is this a home you plan on having forever? Um, is this a home that only costs a certain amount of money? Like, is it, you know, a home that's like $75,000, $50,000, or is it like the big Kahuna dream house worth, you know, 3.5 million? That, those are the conversations you have to have with inside of your household to decide, should we be aggressively paying off this mortgage or are we more worried about having money to live off of when we retire? The decision is yours. I just, I just give the, I just spit the, the knowledge, the game. If you want more, you know, you got to pay for it. RochelleAdamson.com. <laughs> Hello. You know, but I promise you, you won't be uh, let down. You will not be disappointed. Um, and so that is it. That is our goal. Those are every, you know, our plans. That's everything that's happened. And I've been talking long enough. Mortgage payoff updates, mid-year progress. Done. Done. If you want to know more about how the mortgage payoff journey has been going for us, check out my playlist below. I've been talking this for the past two years and it's getting more and more exciting with every video, I must admit. Um, because like I said, we started at 50000 and now we're at, you know, 17000 That's buck wild. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be tomorrow. <laughs> Let me see what it is for the Goodbye July series because we having fun, okay? I'm enjoying dropping videos for you guys every single day. It is holding me accountable. But now you know why I was delayed. I had to, I had to take care of the her, the her. On July 27th, I dropped the July paycheck number three budget with me. The 28th, I dropped my August budget with me. Today, you're getting the mortgage payoff update, which will be on July 29th, your time. On the 30th, we're going to be doing our last July cash stuff in y'all. And then on the 31st, July 31st, we are ending the month with a bang, okay? We're doing a July budget closeout. I'm going to be sharing real numbers with you guys and letting you guys know exactly how it went and how we spent our money. That's all guys, see you in the next video. Until then, peace, love, and budgets.